Hello everybody, thank you for joining me tonight. I have uh, what I think is my finished design here in front of you. Uh, say hi to Ty. He auto-generates in SketchUp. I can get rid of him, but I just thought I'd have him here for scale. So, hi Ty. Goodbye Ty. Just moved him over 20,000 millimeters. Uh, we have a boom with propellers on a stick. Uh, if you keep watching this video, you'll see how I designed some of this. I took some screenshot time lapse get ups, but um, pretty simple. Basically, we've got a eight foot long uh, carbon fiber tube from Forte Carbon. Uh, they actually make boat sail masts for the most part, but you know, a tube's a tube. I've got that on the way. Uh, we have these nifty little brackets here. These are from McMaster Car. I have those in hand, so I've got measurements from those, and they're roughly the right size. They actually curve around the back, but I didn't care enough to try to model that. Basically, bolt holes and length is all I cared about. So I've got a total of six per side, 12 for the whole thing, uh, two for each motor mount, two for each prop guard, really just to keep it from twisting into the propeller and uh, two for the center line mounts. So I guess we'll start from the outside and work our way in. First we've got our motor here. This is a T-Motor U13. Should be good for somewhere in the 50 pound thrust range. Uh, swinging a 32 inch 11 pitch propeller. Uh, that runs off of a speed controller whose amperage is yet to be decided. I'm going to start with 120 amp. That should really squeak by. Hopefully that runs it. If it doesn't, I'm prepared to shell out for 180 amp, but it seems excessive for a motor that pulls a little over 110 at peak. Anyways, uh, we've got a carbon fiber plate here. All the carbon fiber I've done here is uh, five millimeter. So that plate just attaches it to the tube. Moving on down. This is the hoop, as far as the hoop is concerned. Um, what I've done here in designing is just so I can order the carbon fiber parts. So this is omitting the netting. It's probably going to be something more along the line of a wire, but I've added some holes in each of these spokes. Turn off x-ray view there. Uh, these holes will allow for a five millimeter bolt with a nut and a washer sitting inside of them. So the bolt will go in from the back and the washer and nut will grab the bolt and kind of suck this whole arm in. Show you what it looks like pulled out so it makes a little more sense. So it's it's kind of hollow for the the five millimeter bolt but then it does have these uh, little pegs built in that will slot into the hole and keep its shape. Probably also going to throw a washer on the back just to make sure it holds. So I've got six of those. Um, the upper one only has one bolt because this actually tapers as you get towards the tip. So one, two, three, and then the bottom three are the same as the top three. These arms are actually layered on top of each other. So one of them spans down to here and then the other one keeps going. You can see there's one layer here and then it kind of staggers out five millimeters and there's another layer there just so they all get sandwiched with the same three bolts. It'll go one, two, three, hold it all together. Um, that plate oh, that plate will be clamped on by two more of these clamps onto the post and that should keep it from wobbling much at all. This is all five millimeter thick carbon. Should be plenty stiff enough. Um, the thickness here of I guess this spoke arm, whatever you want to call it, 50 millimeters. That should be more than enough. Uh, moving inward here got this nifty little guy. Uh, one thing that Justine did with the original was make a carbon fiber kind of wrapped 3D printed piece to attach the boom to the risers. Um, I guess that works, but I'm not much of a fabricator in that way. Certainly don't have the space for it. So instead what we'll be using are soft links around the tube and up through the hole. So 
that will put the center of gravity just in front of the pole where uh, where it'll be hanging from and the trick is going to be to counter the motor's weight which is on the front of the pole with the battery's weight which is behind the pole so mounting it just in front of the pole or suspending it from just in front of the pole either the inner hole or the outer hole should help with that i also have a rearward and a forward hole to suspend the battery from whichever one i need to achieve balance and yeah it's just mirrored on the other side i really like sketchup i know it's probably not the best and i know somebody's typing why don't you use solidworks why don't you use insert cad software i use i don't know i learned this back in 2012 when i started doing 3d printing it works for me and i know how to use it so i knocked this whole thing out probably a combined six hours i'd say from drawing the propeller and the motor to spec and then just modeling over it. Uh, anyways, this is hopefully what it's going to look like when it's done, and I'll let you watch some of the design process.